thanks a lot for coming to the session. Uh, so I am uh, based out of India, and I have been associated with Percona for about five years now. Um, I work with the PMM team, and today we are going to look at how you can use Percona monitoring and management to monitor the databases that you are running. Uh, and we're also going to look into some of the features that it offers out of the box. Um, so I just go over uh, what PMM is and uh, then take a quick uh, review on the architecture of PMM, uh, jump into the monitoring side, uh, and then we'll look at the query analytics uh, feature in PMM, um, talk about advisors, uh, what are advisors in PMM, and then we'll have uh, some uh, demo on backup and restore in PMM and finally uh, if time permit we are going to look at how you can manage and how you can use database um, as a service in PMM. So let me start. <coughs> so basically what is PMM? <coughs> it's uh, an open source database tool uh, that primarily focuses on allowing you to monitor your databases uh, it uh, gives you an ability to analyze the kind of workload that you are running on PMM, uh, on your database, sorry. Uh, you get the capability to troubleshoot any performance issues. And on the top of that, we also provide you features on managing your database. Uh, currently, we have support for backup and restore on MySQL and MongoDB. And we are also planning to uh, GA very soon our database as a service feature. Uh, that's going to allow you to run uh, Percona operators and deploy DB clusters on your Kubernetes uh, infrastructure. Uh, so, going into the before going into the monitoring demo, I just wanted to quickly cover an architectural overview of what PMM is um, or how basically uh, PMM architecture looks like. It's not an in-depth analysis, but probably I have referred the documentation where you can go in and check more details around how PMM actually works. So we've got a PMM server and a client, uh, where PMM server consists of some of the components that Percona built. For example, PMM Manage G, that's basically the brain behind PMM. Uh, we use Victoria metrics uh, as our time series storage uh, database. Basically, all the metrics that we collect from the clients are stored in Victoria metrics. It's completely compatible with Prometheus. So uh, that's what we use as a time series database. Uh, we have query analytics that under the hood uses ClickHouse to store query uh, metrics. And uh, then we have Grafana, which is basically the UI layer in PMM uh, that lets you look at the metrics and uh, all the dashboard that we ship with PMM. On the client, we have PMM agent. That's the component that is built by Percona and it communicates with PMM Managed D. Uh, so if you have uh, multiple databases, you install uh, PMM client on each database host and it would set up different exporters that we've shipped with PMM uh, client. And then there is VM agent, which is basically a component responsible for uh, pushing metrics from the client node to the PMM server instance. So PMM basically supports two uh, mode in which you can gather metrics from the client instances. One is a push mode and the other is a pull mode. The difference is uh, in pull mode, the server is actually reaching out and trying to gather metrics from the client instances. While as in push mode, you have clients pushing the metrics to PMM server. Um, let's uh, talk about what kind of monitoring uh, options we have in PMM and what all databases do we cover uh, when it comes to monitoring in PMM. So uh, as you can see, PMM basically supports uh, most of the major, uh, majorly used databases. We have support for MySQL, PostgreSQL, MongoDB. And basically, I would say monitoring is a bread and butter for PMM because we ship PMM with a lot of custom dashboards that primarily are built by our database experts. So these dashboards, they come from internal experience, uh, dealing with customer issues, um, and trying to uh, you know capture how you can troubleshoot a customer performance issue. So I will quickly show you people on a live instance of PMM that I have, uh, where you can actually look at the number of dashboards that we ship for different databases. Uh, we also have support for monitoring cloud database. So if you are using Amazon RDS or Amazon Aurora instances, uh, if you have a GCP, uh, MySQL, and Postgres instance, or if you have a Microsoft Azure, uh, MySQL, and Postgres instance, 
you can monitor that using PMM. Um, I would say one of the most important and uh, a great feature in PMM is the external exporters. Uh, basically, external exporter is um, if you have a service that PMM doesn't support by default, but if you have an exporter available in the community, you can start uh, monitoring that service using the external exporter uh, feature in PMM. So let's quickly uh, look at how uh, the monitoring looks like. <clears throat> so this is the home dashboard of PMM. Uh, I should have changed the theme to white, but uh, yeah. Um, what you're looking at is basically it's showing you how many databases it is monitoring at the moment. I just set up this instance for test and demo purpose, um, probably a few hours ago. Um, what you see here is there are two MySQL databases, four MongoDB and two Positive SQL databases that PMM is monitoring. You get an overview of all the nodes and the health, uh, CPU usage, memory usage on the home dashboard. And when you add an instance in PMM, um, you basically get to see uh, the instance um, detail. Uh, for example, let me quickly show up MySQL instance summary. So I added a MySQL instance for monitoring in PMM, and as you can see, it's uh, it is shipped with all the dashboards that we custom that we build uh, internally and ship with PMM, and these are all um, custom dashboards. And you can see here, uh, you can filter by service uh, that you want to uh, basically monitor. So there are two databases that we are monitoring, and you can uh, see that the metrics are hitting PMM server. Um, I'll quickly jump onto the setup part uh, and try to talk about it. Uh, so how do you set up monitoring in PMM? It's pretty straightforward. Uh, you need to have a PMM server running and you can install PMM client on the database host. Once you have PMM client installed on the database host, you can uh, config uh, the PMM admin uh, command to connect the client and server. Once the connection has been set up, all you have to do is create a monitoring user according to the docs uh, that we have. And once you have set up your monitoring user, you can use PMM admin add commands to uh, add uh, specific databases for monitoring. There is a lot of help instructions available. Uh, so if you run PMM admin add help commands, you will basically see an entire list of supported uh, command line uh, options and all the list of databases that we support in PMM. Um, let's talk about query analytics. So uh, query analytics is, I would say, one of the most important feature in PMM, which basically allows you to monitor the kind of workload that you are running on your database. Uh, what kind of queries are being executed and what's the query that basically needs perform uh, uh, needs some um, uh, have some performance issues um, in we support query analytics for all the three databases as you can see and there are different query source that you can use uh, to monitor um, uh, your query performance if you want to use uh, slow log you can use slow log or performance schema in mysql um, in postgresql we have pg stat pg stat statements and uh, pg stat monitor PGStat Monitor is an extension that Percona has built. It's a custom extension that you have to install on your Postgres database. Um, it basically seamlessly integrates with PMM. So it's uh, an in-house tool. Uh, it, it's an open source tool. And it gives you far more better insights as compared to PGStat statements. Um, and um, let's quickly look at query analytics as well. So on my test instance that you're seeing uh, right now, I added uh, two MySQL instances. And one of them was basically added using slow log. How do I get to know what kind of instances I've added? Um, you can actually see it either on their individual dashboards, or you can even go to the PMM inventory. And you can try to look at the services that you have added. And here you can clearly see that I have got two MySQL uh, services running. One is uh, MySQL check service and the other is MySQL client slow log. Um, if I want to see uh, what uh, is the query analytics on a specific service, I can go to query analytics using the menu in PMM. I'm just going to filter by time range because I ran a specific sysbench workload a few hours ago. Um, here, uh, what you're seeing is, um, all the queries across all the databases uh, and um, coming all the data coming from them 
uh, what I wanted to show is the MySQL service that I added uh, with flow lock. So I can do that in multiple ways. I can either use the service name filter if I already know the service or I can use even the technology um, if I want to um, uh, filter by MySQL um, uh, databases only. So as you can see, uh, there is an SB test um, queries that are being executed and all of these queries are uh, the load that I ran on my database. Uh, when I click on a query, I can clearly see that there are metrics related to the query execution time, how much, how many times the query was executed. Uh, you get to see examples and explain of a query. Um, and you can actually uh, gather a lot of metrics uh, similarly for PG stat, uh, P PG database as well as MongoDB. So uh, this is how query analytics looks like in PMM. There is also an option for you to add a different metric. So for example, right now what you're seeing is PMM query analytics is showing you uh, metrics for load, uh, query count and query time. But if I want to use a different metric, I can use that using the add column feature. And there you get a bunch of uh, metrics that you can basically use in query analytics. Um, for example, let's say I want to look at the byte sent uh, data and I can see uh, that byte sent uh, information is available on the query analytics. I can make it my main metric and it will basically sort uh, all the queries based on the uh, byte sent uh, uh, that I have for uh, in QM. Okay. So we've looked at the monitoring part uh, where basically we have dashboards showing you metrics. Uh, we have looked at the query analytics part where you have uh, query details and query performance information. Um, the next is advisors, which is basically uh, intelligence built in PMM, uh, where we have some pre-configured checks uh, coming from our database experts. Whenever you add a database to monitoring in PMM, it uh, runs those checks uh, against the databases and tries to suggest you or uh, give you a suggestion in terms of what you can improve if there is a change needed in the configuration or if there is a change needed uh, in the way that you have set up your database. Uh, these are all coming from our uh, experts. So how can you use this feature in PMM is pretty simple. Um, I am using a very uh, basic instance without um, any um, without any uh, custom connections. So I will just quickly show you. As you can see on the home dashboard, uh, there is zero advisors, failed advisors right now uh, because I have not actually executed any advisors check. Um, in PMM settings, you get to change the interval of an advisor. So ideally they would run once in four hours. Uh, that's the frequent interval and the standard interval and rare interval. For the demo purpose, I'm just going to change it to the bare minimum value. Once I enable advisors, um, so here what you can see is uh, there are some configuration advisors that we ship with PMM and then there are some security advisors. What are configuration and security advisors? These are basically, um, for example, if you have a database that's outdated, uh, you would get an advisor for uh, that, a check running on your database and trying to uh, tell you that you probably need to upgrade your database version. Um, if you have a security configuration that probably is uh, not uh, done right, maybe like a root user without password, or uh, if you have a CV on the version that you're running, it's basically going to uh, show you those advisors. Uh, depending on your, uh, so uh, depending on your account, so we have Percona platform where basically you can connect your PMM instance to Percona platform and get uh, access to more advisors, uh, custom advisors. And if you are a paid customer, uh, it basically gives you um, even more advisors uh, running custom for your uh, deployments. Um, so let's see if I am able to get some advisors on my database instance that I've just enabled. Ideally, it's not really needed to manually run it. It automatically triggers, but uh, for the sake of time, I'm probably going to run it manually. Yeah, 
as you see, I just uh, triggered uh, the advisors and I can start seeing them uh, on the home dashboard. Uh, when I click on it, I can see that uh, there is um, a check for Postgres CVE because I intentionally set up a version that had a CVE and I also installed an older version of Postgres because I wanted to see if there was going to be any warning on this or not. Um, if you go back, probably we'll have more advisors showing up. Yep. You can see here that there are um, different checks that are uh, basically uh, being executed. Um, let's quickly jump on to the next part. So uh, let's look at how backup and restore works in PMM. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, we have support for MongoDB backup and restore, uh, and we also have support for MySQL. Uh, it's in technical preview right now. Uh, for setting up backup and restore, you all all you need is to have PMM client installed on the host page or running your database, and you probably need PXB and PBM depending on uh, the kind of database that you're running. So um, if I have to show this uh, on the instance that I have, um, I'll just quickly show you folks how it looks like. So I, before I uh, prepared this instance for the session, I added a MongoDB replica set uh, to my PMM uh, instance for monitoring. Um, I can see that on, So you can see that I have a MongoDB replica set uh, running uh, right now and I have metrics coming uh, for that instance. Uh, what I will do is I'll go to backups and uh, create a backup location. Uh, you can configure it using an S3 uh, location or you can do it via local storage option. Uh, for demo, I will just do a local uh, storage. configure a test location. There is a way for you to configure uh, schedule, a ba uh, schedule backups for your database. Um, we're not going to go into the schedule part, uh, but I'll just quickly show you an on-demand uh, backup that I'm going to take right away for my MongoDB instance. Choose the replica set uh, one. Uh, we have support for physical and logical both. Um, I can choose the location that I just added. In advanced settings, you basically get to uh, define if there was any failure, do you want to retry and stuff like that. So as you can see, it's trying to take a backup. Um, you get access to the logs. If there's any failure, you probably uh, want to uh, see why that backup failed. Um, you can get that access here. And as it succeeded, I can even restore uh, from any uh, specific backup. I currently don't have any restores on this, but I will quickly show you. Um, how restores look like. So that's how restores and backup work in PMM. Um, you can access the logs and uh, try to troubleshoot if there's any failure um, on the backups. Finally, um, going to the last part, which is uh, database as a service, where you can actually use DBAS uh, in PMM, uh, where you can provide it a Kubernetes uh, config file um, and it's going to uh, install Percona operators uh, on your uh, Kubernetes infrastructure and allow you to deploy different uh, DB clusters on it. Um, I've got a sample uh, mini cube uh, that I have and I'll quickly show you how uh, that looks like. So for running DBAS in PMM, you um, go to the DBAS uh, option and there you see register a new Kubernetes cluster. I have a mini cube uh, cube config file.
probably my mini tube died that's why i don't like it live demos uh, but yeah um yep I've, i had another cube a mini cube file that i was uh, going to use and as soon as, as soon as you register your kubernetes cluster uh, it will uh, basically set up uh, operators on it and then you will have an option to create db clusters um, let it register and install operators while i will uh, quickly complete the presentation uh, so there are some reference material that you can use uh, and probably reach out to us uh, if you have any questions while you are trying pmm uh, we have a discord group uh, and we have a pmm channel there uh, you can actually um, uh visit us uh, and uh, you know ask any questions that you have uh, while you're trying out pmm um i am um, ready to take any question and answers if there are any yeah please of pg star statement and the pg star monitor you mentioned about yep uh so basically in pg star statements we have um uh, a lot more metrics when it comes to uh, cpu memory consumption histogram uh, all those we have in pg stat monitor while you don't get in pg stat statement um along with that uh, it's uh, efficient on to, uh, as compared to pg enabling pg uh, pg stat statements on your postgres uh, instance so that's basically the difference um, i think maybe i would like to know where these backups are getting stored like is it on a pmm server or we can integrate s3 or external you can storage? integrate an s3 uh, storage and you can also have a local storage option uh, the one that i showed was basically sto getting stored on the lo locally on the client node um i don't know why i am not able to register the kubernetes cluster but i'll quickly run the demo that i have for dbas so that you folks get an idea of how this looks like I always keep a backup of video. So, um, yeah. Any other questions, Mr. Rai? Yeah, it's completely open source. Uh, you can get to see the code that we have for PMM Manage D or PMM Agent. You can contribute back. Um, it's completely open source. So as you can see, this is how basically uh, the DBAS uh, looks like. Um, once it uh, registers the Kubernetes cluster, it's going to uh, show you an option to create DB clusters after provisioning it, uh, and uh, from there you can actually um, set up different versions of the databases. Uh, as you can see, uh, for MySQL, what specific version of database you want to deploy? For MongoDB, what version of database you want to deploy? That's all the time we have today. Okay. But uh, I'm sure you're around. 